Hi guys, my name is Crystal. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome old subscribers, welcome new. If you like my videos, please press the like button. Please do subscribe. It is Sunday evening and it's really, really hot and humid. It's really hot and humid. It's actually 26 degrees inside my flat. 26 degrees. Alexa, what's the time, please? It's 8.08 p.m. You'll have to excuse me if you sit here, people shouting. I don't know where it's coming from, but because it's hot, everybody's got their windows and their back doors open, so to speak. So if you hear loud noises or rude noises, I do apologise. It's nothing to do with me. The windows are open, the back doors open. When I finish this video, I'm going to put the fans on, but it's nothing to do with me. I don't control anybody outside, as you well know. So if you hear loud noises or rude noises, I apologise for other people. Um, so, I went out to the co-op this morning. I spoke to Kim. And she said to me, you don't want a man that gropes you, do you? And I said, no, I don't. Because Charlie groped me on the Rochester Riverside field. I said no twice. He still did it. And then I had to tell him no. Right to his face. And I haven't seen him since. So I got food for for Nikki. I'm still worried about my cat. She's extremely thin. I, I'm feeding her every so often. Uh, this uh, whiskers duo which she likes. She peeps her head round the corner of the door and tells me that she wants some food and, and, and her attention, whatever. So, I don't have to keep saying it, do I? That I'm a single woman. I'm a woman. Single. And I have been for some time. Um, I was married for 18 years, um, I got divorced in 2008, had several on, a, on and off encounters that didn't work out and now I have, I think, decided that I'm better off by myself because I'm just sick of what's going on, I'm tired of fighting against it, so I'm just going to carry on smiling and being myself whatever is thrown at me okay people will believe what they will believe that you can you can try and educate them you can you can say to your blue in the face i'm crystal i'm a woman if they choose to believe otherwise that's their problem it's not mine and take the piss all you like and at the end of the day you know you need to laugh at yourself because you've got things wrong so i came back from the co-op um, and then I took Max out for the morning walk. It was extremely hot, very, very, very hot. And, you know, it makes people angry. It irritates people. It causes arguments, rages. So I just keep myself to myself, keep out of the way of other people and just carry on with the rest of my day. So when I came back for the walk, um, all I had for lunch was a couple of rolls because I felt so hot. I didn't feel like, I I had a roast dinner in the fridge, but I didn't cook it because I'm sweating buckets now and I was sweating buckets earlier. I don't know when this heat is actually going to subside because it's, it's just awful. You can't think in it, you can't do anything in it. So I just potted around on YouTube. People don't l upload so much in this weather because it's, it's stifling hot. But I'm trying to keep up to date with things myself. So I watched YouTube videos. Um, I'm wearing the t-shirt that is on the front of my YouTube. And it's me. It's my picture. It's me. And this is the Royal Marsden Cancer Charity. That's what it says. It's not a plain maroon t-shirt. It's a cancer charity t-shirt. Right? And I find it comfortable in this heat. That's why I wore it. 
part of yesterday, part of today. I wore a Dementia UK t-shirt this morning because I support charities. So later on in the afternoon, I gave Max a bath and I had like a cold, lukewarm shower. So I'd, I'd had a shower, Max was refreshed and, and I tried to cool him down. And we just went for a small walk around the bottom area. Because I haven't been down there for a while, past the blue crane, around that, looking at the river, seeing what's going on down there. Because eventually you should be able to walk from Rochester to Chatham, going down the bottom way. So I'm just seeing what was going on there. My camera wasn't working this afternoon, it gets overheated and then it just conks out. So this morning it was too hot for my phone to record. This afternoon it was too hot for my phone to record, but this evening it was working. So I came back this afternoon, I came into my flat, I haven't got anybody in my flat, I haven't got any family living with me, my kids are all grown up. One of them's in London, the rest are in Gloucestershire. I've just got my mum that lives nearby in Chatham, near the Hen and Chickens pub, in the upper Luton part of Chatham. That's all I've got living down here now, me and my mum. So I came in after that walk. I had loads of water to drink, sweating buckets, again trying to look for YouTube videos to watch but it's hard to even concentrate in this heat to be fair. It's hard to even concentrate on a TV programme because you, you know my t-shirt is soaking wet just sitting in this flat. It's soaking wet, I'm perspiring everywhere. Right? I don't need people aggravating me, right, taking all their shit out on me, I don't need it, go and find someone else to bother. I mean, I have said it many, many times and I keep saying it, if you don't like me, you don't like my videos, don't watch them, don't, you know, why do you watch them and then start on me afterwards? It doesn't make sense to me. If I don't like something, I avoid it like the plague. I don't go near it and aggravate it. So it's something else. It's like someone's you're trying to draw attention to yourself. Coughing. I'll be walking down the street and all of a sudden someone will go... <laughs> and then I turn around, what the fuck are you doing that for? If you don't like somebody or you think someone's horrible, you don't draw attention to yourself, do you? So that they stare at you. Anyway. So I just tried to find something to watch. Another cup of coffee, another cold drink, checking my cat's okay, looking after Max, and then it's time for the evening walk. And what time do I go out? Every day. Ten to bloody seven. 10 to bloody 7 and sometimes I hold Max underneath my arm because he's a chihuahua, he's not a flipping uh, Labrador, he's not a big dog, he's a really tiny dog so I, you know, Max is tiny and I hold him under my arm and he's still got the red collar at the moment even though I bought him a green one. Right, my head isn't bald, is it? I'm not a man. So I look out of my window, and one of my neighbours is, is stood right opposite the balcony, fag hanging out of his mouth with his dog under his arm. And he's got a bald head. Near the time I'm due to take my dog out for a walk. 10, nearly 10 to 7 so I wait for him to come back and put his dog away because my dog will start yapping and you know I don't want that so I let him come back in and I get ready to go out and then another neighbour comes out the door, slams it 
And just as I'm opening the door, someone else comes out and the door goes bang, wallet. And I come back in, I wait for them to go out. And then finally, about five to seven, I get out of these flats. I am an adult. I get out of my flats about five to seven and I go down the back way. And I go past Common Creek Wolf, up the back of the flats, there is a car reversing, there's a black car reversing. Keep safe, keep to the side, and try and get onto the field. And there's a guy throwing a stick with a ball to his dog, and I let him come off the field. Go round the back of Costa Coffee, let this guy come off the field. There's a bloke on a bicycle with a backpack, with a backpack, a dark skinned male with a black backpack on and a white t-shirt cycling up the path. He goes and sits on the bench. Then two young lads on bicycles come from behind me and they do a wheelie and they go onto the field. And I just slowly walk around the field. I'm a single woman and I do, yes, I do get scared, but I don't show it. So I was walking slowly with Max and every, every night for the past two or three nights, I've done a TikTok video by where the trains are and the sunset coming down. No problem at all. And then that black Labrador dog puppy called Luna comes out of nowhere and starts chasing and I don't need a dog jumping all over me in this heat. Not a big black hairy dog jumping all over me in this heat. And I don't want to lose my temper. So I calm myself down and I just say to Luna, I say no darling. No you're not jumping all over me and she goes back. I didn't shout because it's all caught on camera. I didn't shout at the dog. I didn't lose my temper. Even though the blonde owner was behind my back on her phone. The pretty blonde foreign lady behind my back on her phone. The dog ran back and I had to walk Max faster than I normally would because this black dog was being allowed to run loose behind my back, this black dog. I got off the field and the dog didn't jump all over me or scratch me. Um, and I got off the field and I had, you, you know, just leave me alone. Right, just, you just leave people alone. You don't follow them about. If you don't like somebody, don't follow them about. It won't do you any good. I will not tolerate, tolerate racism. Not in the country that I live in. Not racism. That's hate crime. I won't tolerate it. I experienced it in Gloucestershire and I never want to go through that again. And that should have been reported to the police. Putting Ku Klux Klan posters on my fucking outside my front door. And this is going to stop. Because they won't say it to my face because they're cowards and they're chickens. And they know what they're doing, setting black dogs on me, and they know what they're doing it for. We know the police won't do anything because they didn't do anything in Gloucester, did they? Did they? They used to come out at 12, between 12 and 4 in the morning and ask me if I wanted to kill myself. Did I feel like self-harming myself? 
They didn't deal with the bullying. They didn't deal with the hate crime. They didn't do anything at all. Now I'm bigger and I'm stronger. I've got a social media following and I can easily get access to newspapers and the TV. And I suggest the people that are setting black dogs on me stop doing it. Because I was very quiet in Gloucestershire. No word of a lie, I was being intimidated, threatened, and so were my children, and I will not tolerate it now. You can make all the horrible noises you want, you bullies, but you will be brought to justice, all of you. Now, I'm going to carry on with my evening. They, that you see, the more they're allowed to get away with it, the more they carry on, but I don't listen to them. I'm not interested in any of them. They keep making noises to draw my attention to them. And nobody knows who they are. You see, me talking about them, you wouldn't know who, who these people were, would you? You wouldn't want to know either. These bullies, you would not want to know who they are, guys. They're not very nice people at all. They stab you, they smile in your face and stab you in the back. Look at the state of my cat. By the time I'm finished with them, they'll be ashamed of themselves. They won't, won't want people to be drawing attention to them. to be ashamed of themselves. So that dog was caught on camera, right? That's twice that dog's been caught on camera. It's not the dog's fault, it's the owner. Now, I'm going to get on with the rest of my evening, and if they want to listen into private conversations, I suggest that they, you know... I really wouldn't want to listen to their conversations. They must be so small-minded and shallow and boring that I wouldn't want to listen to someone else's conversation. I'd rather be getting on with the rest of my life than listening into some boring nobody's conversation. Because that's what they all are. I mean, I, 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 I must be really interested if they need to keep following me around the field and listening to what I'm saying and doing. And every time I speak to someone on the phone, they start pissing their pants, wondering what I'm talking about. Because they're frightened little pussies. They're frightened little pussies. Why don't they say it to my face? I don't want to say it to the camera on their, to my face, do they? They'd rather piddle around behind my back like a baby. Now the joke's on them. I was going to put the radio on, but I'm sure... Well, well let's see, shall we? Alexa... LBC Radio. LBC London from Global Player. Was your guy? What's the what's the excuse given for for incarcerating someone for twenty three hours a day? It's inhumane. Short staff. Right. But when four when four o'clock comes for for dinner, there's like thirty staff on the landing, so they're not short staff there. And today they actually locked the showers up so no one could have a shower and there was a, a big kick-off. How do you know that? You spoke to him? Yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, they won't put none of his phone numbers on. He's been waiting four weeks. I'm the only phone number that he's, he's actually had put on his phone call list. So, so what's his, what's his, Mary, what's his day-to-day -day like? How can he speak to you? How, how on earth is a boy, I don't know how old your son is, after 
you know, spending so much of the day for 24 hours. So it, how, well, many, losing it. how many people in his cell? Uh, two. Right. And um, you can't pass each other. You've got to stand in the corner to let the other one pass. Oh. And the cell that they was in, um, the shower curtain, which you have a privacy to go yeah. to the toilet, was, hang was hanging down. And they only had two little slat windows at the top, which wasn't blowing any air in. So now they've been moved over to another cell, which they've got a, a, a bigger window. But I mean, it's, 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 he's asked to speak to the governor. You saw the governor today, so can I speak to you? Yeah. And the governor, the governor ignored him, then he didn't bother to go and see him. He's asked twice to speak to the governor. He's asked God knows how many times, how many members of staff, can you please put my phone numbers on? I need to contact my solicitor. The solicitor's complaining as well to the prison, the people who reject his medication off. Yeah. Um, um, they tell my son, are you buy, you're buying dodgy medication? But it's not, it's a national health site. Uh, and so they've had to send all the paperwork over to the prison to say, look, it's all legal, his medication, and yet they still haven't given it to him. It, he's starting to lose but it doesn't now. Doesn't he have a right to have a medication? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and it, he has a prescription for it and everything. He didn't just bring it in and say, I need this. No, he, he didn't even bring it in. He got arrested and then he got put on oh, the lawn. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure you don't want, I know you don't want to say where he is, but Mary, would you be able to tell us what, why he is in prison and has he, is he on remand or has he been convicted or has he, is he serving a part of a sentence or what? No, he's on remand at the moment for driving on the ban. Okay. Four weeks? So not. A driving offence? Yes, yeah, and he didn't have any medication on him when he got arrested, so he's literally had nothing. So everyone in the prison now is starting to lose it. One of the screws got dragged in the showers today and I think he got beaten up. Oh, that's not said, good. Yeah, they said... I mean, all the you, you know, you, you want people to work in prisons. You, you, it's not right that the but staff the are being attitude. assaulted. It's, it's the attitude of the staff. The, the staff are like 18 to 20 year olds standing there like a cowboy, you know, giving it all large to the I know, but would it. you want your 18 to 20 year old boy to go off and work in a prison? I mean, you've got to feel sorry for them too, surely, Mary. No, oh, no, I wouldn't really, no. Okay. Not, 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 the, not the money that they get and uh, the job that they have to do, but it's very, very badly paid. Yeah. It's I'm mind of, Mary, just stay on the line. I think I might want to bring in Simon, who actually works in, in a prison. Um, so just stay there. Simon, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. So you've heard of the treatment that Mary's son has been experiencing re or not receiving? I, in I, I, heard, I heard some of it because I was talking to your researcher at the time. So, um, so essentially, the son's on a, a medication for anxiety, he hasn't received it, hasn't seen the prison governor. Yeah. Um, his cell has got a plastic sheet. There are three of them to the cell. A block has been locked and a prison officer was assaulted um, yesterday. Uh, does this sound like your average day in, a, in, a, in an English prison, Simon? Uh, most definitely. Um, I mean, I've been working in, in healthcare in prison for about a year now. Um, I started off in a youth offenders and I actually left there because the violence was actually so um, intense and palpable. Right. And there was an actual incident um, which happened right in front of me, which shook me up so much. So I left there. Um, took on another position, or actually two positions in, in London, um, in two Category B prisons in London, uh, for which I've been out, been there for about a year. Um, yeah, I mean, I was explaining to a researcher that clinics are actually cancelled quite often. They have been, particularly during the summer, because there aren't enough prison officers to bring the prisoners to the actual healthcare unit. So um, we're going, you know, with my other colleagues going there to try and, you know, do our jobs and uh, as best as we can. And we're not seeing any patients at all because they're actually not being brought in. They haven't got the, the staff they to, have to escort the, staff. the prisoners I, I, into I, the healthcare well, units. Yeah, the, uh, a few weeks ago, in one of the prisons that I work at, um, there's meant to be a certain number. I won't go into for security reasons how many prison officers are meant to be in on a particular day. But they were literally down nearly near enough half that they needed yeah. for that day. 
But what are the reasons why? Uh, I mean, is it low morale? I know the pay's not great. I know the conditions are bad. I know it's dangerous. Um, it's, I, I, I hate saying this, but it seems to me miraculous that people like you and others are prepared to work in, in prisons given the, the condition, your working condition, Simon. Um, yes, I suppose it's... Is it a vocation? Is it, it's a vocation. It's also a bit different from our general clinical practice that we do. So that, that's part yeah. of it. But, but uh, I think the percentage is, I remember before even going into healthcare and prisons, that I think, with it, I think the percentage or the, the amount is that within seven months, normally a healthcare worker of any particular uh, yeah. type sort of, of, of leaves because they can't take sort of either the pressure yeah. or, um, yeah, the, the situation well, or the surroundings. Simon, um, you're not a prison officer, you are a, a, a clinician, but you work yeah. in prisons because it, it's, it's, you know, it, it rings the changes and it's very interesting. Mary, um, is it, does it reassure you to hear Simon, who, who's a doctor who actually works in prisons, that the, the, one of the problems that your, your son is actually bearing the brunt of is just really, really low staffing levels? to go, go to court in London and um, the, the, the court, um, the remand place, or what was it, the police station, was a ringing. So, so the judge remanded him because, because of that, but it wasn't his fault. So, so we missed the beginning of that. Your son's remanded because there wasn't the staff to get him to the court? Yeah. So the judge didn't like it and remanded him. But it wasn't your but son's was fault, was it? No, no, but the judge wasn't even listening to it, but there you go. <laughs> Listen, I think we've had a, 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 you know, a call from a obviously not happy mum and a call from somebody who works in prisons, um, Simon. So we're getting, we're getting in all. Let's keep the calls coming in, 0345 6060973. We're going to turn to the rugby uh, briefly after the break, but you're listening to Rachel Johnson on LBC. The time. Radio. Um, I'm just a woman living by myself, coping with bullying, and um, I can't make people believe that I'm a woman. What can I do? I was married for 18 years. I've had four kids, and you can't stop people's opinions. That when they've got something set in their head, they're going to keep it in their head. And nothing you say or do will, will make them believe you. But my ex-husband can verify the fact that I'm a woman. I was married for 18 years. He can verify I'm a woman. This only started when I came down to Chatham in 2008 to live with my mother and my father. This is when this rumour started. Right, so Max is asleep on the chair. Unfortunately, in this heat, you've got to have the windows open, but I'm going to put the cold air fan on to block out the noise. Um, and I'll see you all later. <laughs> 